How do you do? I'm Jane Cleland, uh, the author of the Josie Prescott Antiques Mystery Series and Noir Plays, and I want to welcome you back to the Writer's Room. We're here talking with S.J. Roseanne, the multiple award-winning and best-selling author of both a series of novels featuring Lydia Chin and Bill Smith and standalones, more than a dozen novels and more than three dozen short stories. So, S.J., where do ideas come from? Oh, they're in the air all around. Uh, my first novel was based out of, not based on, but it came to me out of a newspaper story I was reading. I was working full time. I was taking a break, reading the Times. I read a story. I thought, oh my God, there's got to be more behind this than it looks. And I looked into it, and, and that was it. There, there are ideas everywhere, but in my case, I usually work from theme. That is, when I wrote Reflecting the Sky, which is set in Hong Kong, I wanted to set a book in Hong Kong. And so you picked the location first. I, I, Hong Kong just was mind-blowing to me. And I thought, OK, if that's true, what is it about Hong Kong? And it, what it is is that everything that happens in Hong Kong happens in a mirror. It's land, but it's water. It's British, but it's Chinese. It's on the mainland, but also on an island, and, and on and on, everything goes like that. And I thought, okay, if that's true, then the plot needs to be also, things need to be mirrored. So everything in, this, in oh, the book so happens twice. Yeah. Um, or happens in, in, in some kind of inverse way, or that kind of thing. And ideas just, just grow out of other ideas. How do you decide when an idea is good? How do you decide when it has merit? If it intrigues me, for if it intrigues me over time if I start thinking well if that happened then would this and who would and why would and how long it, does it take you to think before you begin writing it takes me I usually like to have the next book in mind as I'm nearing the end of the one I'm working on and and so I there's sort a of, continuity yeah and I sort of toy with it. Well, if that's what I'm going to write about, what would that mean? And I start reading, and I start doing research, and I start seeing things through the lens of, of that. And if there's a lot to see, yeah. I'll write about it. Now, you just mentioned research. I do a boatload of research into antiques and into the kind of people that would buy that antique. And uh, how much research do you do? Huge amounts of research. I love research. I could research yeah. all day it's seductive. and never write. Right. I love I love learning things. So how do you decide when you've done enough? I've never felt like I've done enough, but there is always a point at which I feel like I can start yeah. and then research, continue to research as I go. And that's usually what I do. And then I will have a running, I keep a yellow pad by the side of the computer, and I have a running list of, of facts and items and questions that I need to research, geography or uh, meals or, if it's a Lydia book, the Chinese name of something. Now, I make up a lot of stuff. Do you? Dude, never, never. I, I don't make up geography unless I've made up the entire town. Yeah, yeah. But I will go and see what's on that street and write about those places. So you go to the places you write yeah, about. I won't write about any place I haven't been because there's always something that you are assuming is there in terms of the way it feels or yeah. smells or the way the rain falls and you're wrong. Yeah. And there's all all kinds of stuff that you it never occurred to you is an issue. One of the things that happened to me the third time I went to Hong Kong is I stepped off the uh, train from the plane into the city and there was a smell. And I don't, and I don't mean a bad smell, I don't mean a stench, but there's a, a scent of Hong Kong, which is not the same as any place else. And I realized, since it was the third time, that I recognized it. And I would, if you put it in a bottle and said, what's this? I would say, oh my god, it's Hong Kong. I wouldn't have known that. Had you not been there. Yeah. Now, you're a best-selling author. And I'm, this is going to sound flippant, and I don't mean it flippantly. Why? Are you a better writer than everybody? Do you have better publicity? Is it blind luck? No, I think it's, I think it's a, a the luck is in having the combination, which I didn't make. The, the first piece of luck is you have to have an editor who thinks that you've written a book that people want to read, which is not the same as writing a book that people want to read. A lot of people do that, and an editor, they can't find an editor bright enough to know that. 
if your editor thinks you've written a book that people want to read and he's wrong, you, people That's won't it. buy it and mm -hmm. it won't happen. But if you happen to have written a book that is what people want right then and somebody sees that, mm. they buy it, they get the publicity behind it. If you're lucky and the reviews come and they're good, it also helps if it's, if you, the, my, my football book came out um, right around um, Father's Day. Well, that's handy, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, the, because and that's so an example of timing. And yeah, you just yeah, said yeah. if you write a book that people want to read now, so it, there's a timing issue. There is absolutely a timing issue, but it's nothing you can do anything about because, first of all, when you write a book, you have to write a book people will want to read then yeah. when you're done. Yeah. And you don't know when that is. And then when they buy it, they say, thank you very much. This is great. We're going to publish this 18 months from now. And you have to hope people still want to read it then. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. yeah, things have to align for you. And you don't you. worry about that. You just try to write yeah. the best books you can. The best book I can on a topic that interests me at the moment. Um, there are, are certain things. My editor once said to me about a I had, there's a thriller I want to do. All right, I'll admit it. It's set in Mongolia. And my, my agent said to me, darling, the world is not waiting for a thriller set in <laughs> Mongolia. He may be right. However, he's also a great enough agent that he uh, promised me he would try to sell it when I... Yeah. Now, maybe he won't be able to. Maybe nobody will ever want to read that's this That's what book, you want. But I want to yeah. write this book so badly. So, Talk uh, to me about being a female author. Uh, specifically, you used to be on the board of Sisters in Crime. Yes. Sisters in Crime was formed more than 25 years ago to help female crime fiction authors achieve parity as measured by review inches and uh, advances. Did it work? No. It's working. Uh, our visibility has risen. But if you look at the statistics, and there were statistics last year, which was, what, 2011, for the 2010 year, uh, review inches are not as big. Review uh, frequency is not as big. The uh, advances certainly are not as big. Yes, the, you know, there's Janet Ivanovich. I mean, people always bring that kind of thing up. Is that why you go by SJ? No, I go by SJ because my um, name, when I was young, nobody had ever heard Shira, which is my name and they would say Shira, and then they would say Shira Rosen, and then it would ma really make me nuts. So when I started writing, I realized I could at least get rid of that problem. And, so that, and there it is. And there it is, and there, and it, there is. it is. The only person who wasn't happy was my mother. <laughs> but I bet she's proud of you now. I have a question for you. About five years ago, you started putting six-word short stories on your website, yes. Re yes. writer submitted. Yes. This is based on Ernest Hemingway's, what he considered yes. his best work. Yes. For sale, baby shoes, never used. What's your interest in them? I, these are crime stories, and, and if you want to send them to me, just send them, you know, go to my website, find my email, send them in. And they, I think you can say so much in so, few words, and writers don't necessarily know that. I get some of these things, and they're knockouts. And Can you give us an example or two? Oh, my God, can I? Uh, no, I'm not sure I can remember. <laughs> this is, you're putting me on the spot. How about oh. one of your own? Do you remember any that you wrote? <sighs> no, you might have to go to the website. All right, that's all right. Sorry they're there, and that. they're wonderful. They're there, and now you, I, I know you like to do the titles. Yes, I love to do the titles. Well, do you like to do titles for your own yes. books, too? I do my own titles. Once or twice, my publisher has asked me to um, change a title. Once I thought they were wrong, and once I thought they were right. It doesn't matter. I do what they tell me. Uh, the uh, No Colder Place was their title. Turns out to be a really great title for that book, much better than what I had. But generally, I like to do my own. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And now, you've been in publishing, you've been writing for a number of years, but you used to be an architect. Yes. How did being an architect inform your writing? I, one of the things about being an architect <coughs> is that the way we work, it, it's, a, it's what's called an iterative, iterative process. We go, you do go, you, you start with an idea, because you have to start somewhere. You can't, you can't start with the whole thing complete. You start with an idea, and you move it forward until 
the implications of it become clear, and then you might have to go back and revise what you've done based on the implications of the original idea brought forward and, and worked out. And then you go forward some more until you realize you have to go back and, and change things. And you do this. This is how architecture works. And when you've done that long enough, you become unafraid to go back and do that. A lot of writers, beginning writers, are afraid to put anything down because it closes doors. Mm -hmm. And they might be wrong. And what you learn in architecture is if you were wrong, you've committed to something. And if that means something else is wrong, you can change it. That yeah. none of it, until it's built or printed, is... Writing is, is revision. Writing is constant revision. And architects have taught me Talk a little bit about your writing that. process. So you get a first, do you do a whole first draft? Do no. you revise as you no. go? I revise as I go. I, every morning I start with what I wrote the day before. I look at it. I, I revise it for language, for sense, sometimes for the better idea that I had overnight or whatever. And then I move into the, the next Do you bit. ever go way back? Yeah, sometimes I do. Usually if it's way back, I put it on my list uh, because usually when I go way back, it's for a plot point, not for a uh, point of, of style or rhythm or whatever. So I just, I'll put on my list, I'll discover later on that so-and-so has to not have met so-and-so and that point has to have been made early mm -hmm. on. Yep. Gee, I don't know him. So I put on the list, make sure that the point is made. That Since you've been a published author, you've seen sea changes in the world from publisher consolidation to eBooks. What do you think the future holds? I don't know. I I think uh, I have a friend friends who say this is the best time in the world to be a writer because you're in charge of your own fate. You can publish your own books. I'm not so sure that's a great idea, but it may be true. I don't know what the future holds for authors. I do know that people want narrative. They want story, and they always will. Where they're going to get it, it, and whether it will be from us. I don't know, but I don't think the desire for narrative, which also means movies, yeah. you know, it also they it, want stories. They want stories, but they don't necessarily if want. If you could novels. only say one thing to aspiring writers, what would it be? Right, 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 right. You know, it's 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 about putting words on paper. You get better doing that. It's uh, the the analogy I always make is to sports. You know, you can't hit the ball until you've swung at it 10,000 times. Yeah. And each time you swing, you learn a little more about how you should be swinging. You can't just go out and do it right. You have to be prepared to do it wrong 10,000 times before you can do it right. And you have to do that without any guarantee that you will ever do it right, because there is no guarantee. Mm. The only guarantee is if you don't do that, you won't do it right. Thank you so much, S.J. It's just been a pleasure having you in the writer's room. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.